our snow. Let me look on my drop cam here. Uh, it's very, if it's snowing at all, it's snowing very light. She's such a sissy. So it's 50 mile an hour winds and a foot of snow. And most trains aren't running. And she said, oh, I guess I won't be coming today. You know, fair weather, fair weather visitor. Hey, Myra, how much snow did you get up there? Yeah, Myra did get to stay home. It was very bad this morning. It, it looks like it's getting better now. And as uh, you might have heard a little while ago, it's 18 degrees actual, and the wind is about 20 miles an hour in the city, so it's too below wind chill. Yeah, no, we, Dennis and I bought a bunch of snacks yesterday. Oh, just eight inches in Brooklyn. Okay. Oh, ten. Yeah. All right. So nobody got a foot here that we've spoken to so far. Leave Georgia voice on that forwarding thing. Well, hey, George is, you know, I have it. it here's George. Hello. George. Hello. Uh, what is going on here? Let me uh, try calling him back. <laughs> Your call has been forwarded to an automated voice. George, you just called me one minute ago. What is going on? Okay. We will get we will get this squared away. Jamie B, did you get him yet? Uh he uh said he set up a he says he installed Skype and he sent me his email address. Uh his email address, you know, how sometimes Skype doesn't work in the searching and I asked yeah. him for his Skype handle and he has yet to and I told him how to get to his Skype handle. But he has yet to reply to that email. Oh, okay. And he just called me, but when I answered, he wasn't there. And when I called him back, it went yeah. to voicemail. Uh, there uh, may uh, be technological issues. Maybe he's there could a, be. Uh, Maybe do, the do we snow know where Joe has, is. Where, where George is? He's in L.A. I think. Oh, right? well, then no, he's here, not. Here, here we go. <laughs> Hello, George. Can you hear me? Yeah, I, I sent you the description at 8.05 this morning. Uh, I don't know why. Oh, you know what? Did you send it to AOL again? Y yeah, I did. No, I'm not, on AOL. Did. I'm not on AOL. I sent last week I said, please don't use AOL. Send it to Gmail. Hang on. Uh, oh, oh, no, I went to Gmail. You sent, I sent it again. You know what? I can, you know, did, did you, do you, did you find your Skype handle yet for Jamma B? No, I've been looking for it. I'm, I know I've been searching for about a half an hour, but I'll, I'll send it. I'll send the description to you now. Oh, uh, well, you know, I'm going into AOL and uh, I will send, you. I will send oh, no, George. It's going to be, on, it's gonna be a, it's your regular, regular address. Okay. And, and, uh, I have I have you on speakerphone, Jamie B. So you yeah. can, I, George. I will send you. I don't know if George can hear me. I I, I will send. Uh, I will send George. You can tell George. I will send him. I will email him an address to uh, call me. Call to for him to call me in Skype. Okay. Hey George, Jamie B. Sending you an address that you can call Jamie B. In. And he should use with video. Okay, and then when you do it, you'll click with video. Are you still there? I think he's gone. Okay. We will 
get. All right, I, sent, I sent him my sky panel, so if he uh, if he calls that sky panel, we can have him. Okay. Otherwise, uh, if you, if you're ready, we'll do it next week if we have to. Yeah, yeah, we'll get it, we'll get okay. it straightened out. We'll get it straightened out. I got my recordings going. We're on the stream. I think I'm oh. all set to do this show. Okay, let's do it. All right, so that means I have to say the date and the episode number and countdown from three to two. It's Saturday, the 29th day of January, 2022. This is the GizFizz episode 461. And it begins in three, two. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for... It's the Giz Fizz with the Giz Whiz. It's kind of like Cheese Whiz. It's the Giz Fizz. And now your host, Matt's Mattis Ryder and the Giz Whiz, Dick DiBartolo. Welcome to regular, old-fashioned Giz Fizz. Wow, with the weakest harp we've had in months. Okay. Can we try it again? Old fashioned Giz Fizz. All right. I guess that's the best. Try it one more time. Try, let's try it one more time. Regular old fashioned Giz Fizz. Up. <laughs> oh. The harpist just fell down the stairs with the harp. Uh, all right, so we are going to have a chat room celebrity of the week, possibly. We're going to do photos from George Davis, maybe. We're going to do uh, snappy answers to stupid questions. We're going to do match game, logo, and... I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, I was at the warehouse. I found a letter here. Let me just block out the return address. The letter is, says from Fang. Okay, from Fang. Who might this letter be from? Dick D. Bartolo, Goodson Todman Productions. Somebody's pet. No, let me see. Fang. Oh! Loke. Yeah. Oh, and Tech Dino. Yes. It is from Phyllis Diller. All right. Phyllis Diller, when she was on Match Game, she said, oh, oh you know, I know you work for Mad. You want to write some jokes for me? And I said, yeah. She said, I pay $5. <laughs> I said, okay. And someone said, Phyllis Diller just pays $5? I said, yeah, well, you know what? What do I care? It'd be fun to say I wrote something for, for uh, Phyllis Diller. So I wrote some stuff, and uh, I made $50, all right? Woo I'll just read you. I think she wanted uh, jokes about uh, getting remarried a bunch of times. Uh, so uh, I've been married so many times, I use a bouquet of artificial flowers, and they're on a string. <laughs> <laughs> I have a miniature recorder in my tiara that recites the vows for me. <laughs> oh, I like this, John. This really helps us along. Um, I remember our first fight. It was during the wedding ceremony. <laughs> um, you pay your maid by the hour? At our house, we pay our maid by the ton. <laughs> Uh, I'll do one, just one more. Our house is so filthy, we fill an empty vacuum cleaner bag in five minutes. Imagine what it would be like if we turned the vacuum on. <laughs> All right, I know. Oh, Dwindle says, maybe you should have just gotten them four bucks. Well, I, well, I order. <laughs> All right. Okay, so uh, any luck uh, connecting with Mr. Davis yet? Uh, he has not called me yet, no. He has not. Okay, so what we'll do is, well, I guess we can do the photos 
Let me just look. Hang on a second. Let me see. He said he was going to resend to Gmail, but uh, I don't have them. Should we just do them without what George said? We could do that, right? We can. Okay. All right, so let's do photos from George Davis, and then hopefully by the time we're done with the photos, we'll be connected with George. Um, all right, photo number one, and we'll find out what it is. To, oh, okay, this is great. It's an old jalopy chat room. Is that a, a Jamma B? Is that a Model T? I, I it think isn't. It's, no, I think it's too fancy for a Model T, so later than a Model T. Okay. Uh, don't know. And it, the the grill is distinctive. The uh, radiator probably tells us what brand it is, but I'm not familiar enough. Okay. Just an old car. It's a close-up picture of an old car, probably outside a church, but it can be whatever you want. Blueberry on wheels. Uh, new Ford vinyl EV model. Uber One. RH Drive. I guess they finally ran out of black paint. Barrett Jackson Auction Classic. Tees are only black. It's not a Ford, but we fixed the chameleon circuit. Uh, it's at the church because we're praying it will start. Oh, that's very funny. First Tesla. New Tesla retro model. Car from the house in the middle. Hey, buddy, who you calling an old car? When Uber got its start. Like my gangster mobile, pimp my ride. Wow. Ba a ba a Bonnie and Clyde parked here. If you ain't supposed to drink and drive, why do they call this body style a saloon? It's an Australian old car. European. Phyllis's first wedding limo. Okay, this is probably... Hello. George, what's up? I resent your your descriptions. Uh, I just sent it. Okay. Check your check your computer or your printer. Uh, I'm in my Gmail account. Um, uh, I do not have them. I just sent them. Okay. Uh, uh. uh I'm in my Gmail. Uh, no. And, and uh, are you calling Jamma B on that number he sent you? I, I, I'm looking for his email. I don't have the one that he sent me. I just sent it uh, two minutes ago. Email, I, I sent him, I replied to the email that he sent me oh, two I, minutes ago. Uh, Jamma B replied to your email two minutes ago. So it should be there. I'll, I'll check it right now. Okay, but you know what? I still have nothing from you. Now you sent this to, to Gmail, right? Gmail, yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I I don't have it, George. Oh, okay. Um, uh, well, you know, since you're on the phone, what 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 was your caption for the first photo? The old car. About the old car, I yeah. said the old car is a. Uh, this one has a suicide door. Okay. Okay. That's that. Okay. George's answer caption was, "This version has." A suicide door. A oh, it suicide does. suicide door. Yeah. That, that back oh, door. You, yes. Yeah. Wow, that is unusual. Um, okay, photo number two. And George said in photo number two. Do you want me to continue? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, but keep, but keep, oh, look, okay. keep looking for uh, Jamma B's email. Oh, my okay. gosh. A weird tree, Okay. It's a very weird tree. It looks like the tree trunk is only about five feet high, but the branches are all over the place, and they grow all the way back to the ground. Weird, weird tree. Dr. Mom, tree on LSD. Okay. Nature's monkey bars. That's good, Magoo. Low-hanging branch of the family tree, Ranger Rick, Swiss family treehouse. Hide and seek with Robin Hood. Tree grows in Brooklyn. Tree climbers dream. Octopus of trees. Lowly Joshua tree. 
this lightning got struck by a tree. Your drunk tree, go home. Your drunk tree, go home. Worst tree ever. So now we have branches all over the country. Mandy says, this is what my hair looks like out of the shower. Broccoli close up. That's an old boy. Live Oak Living Wild. Talk about branching out. LSD. I can read the giving tree here. Arthritic tree. It's an oaky from Muskogee. Uh, another arthritic uh, tree. A tree on Three Mile Island. It's just a tree. Varicose vegetation. This is what my family tree looks like. Live oak tree. Yes, Morgus, tree from Mars, huge bonsai, trick a tree, tree stuck in quicksand, my favorite kind, Google's tree product. This is a beautiful tree, and we'll end with what my varicose veins look like. Although Travis says, lazy tree got tired of holding its limbs up. And George's answer was... Our neighbor kids used to come here and play every Saturday. We always had great fun. Okay. Wow. From his own mouth. Wonderful. Okay. Photo, photo number three. Photo number three is a pot of possibly stew. Extreme close-up. But it can be whatever you want. Extreme close-up of something homemade in a pot and maybe even a ladle in there or a big spoon. Dinner is served. Where are you going? No soup for you. Chili cook-off. Chili mac yum. Carrots and chili. Yeah, carrots and chili. I've done that. Uh, Pot, oh, pot of burning love. That stew needs to cook down longer. Morica, hobo stew, missed at home institution cooking, just like mom's, chili, but with carrots. Uh, It's a bit chilly in here. That's a fine stew you've gotten us into. Um, Is it chilly in here? Washcloth soup, swamp with a stainless steel bank. (laughs) Where's the chili powder? Then it's a stew. Hungry man stew. Chili con cani. Come and get your slop. Opossum chili. Whatever it is, we'll get wind of it later. Oh, that's very funny. Did you say chili? Yeah, it's negative degrees out there. Oh, what a gorgeous... uh, uh, What's on George's stove? Stew so thick you can sit in it or on it. Where's the beef, Stu? Jammer B, we need some blazing sound. Uh, oh, blazing saddle sound effects. Chief and the chip and beef stew. Anyone order resin and beef? Stu Art Little. One stew tree. Chuck O Chunk. And George's answer wa- is. I know some friends who have dinner rolls that were good. Go great with this stew. Okay, and we'll get to what that means in a minute. Okay, photo number four. So, George, are you still looking for Jamma B's email? Yeah, I found it. Oh, okay. It it doesn't, it just tells me to go to Skype settings. Um, Jamma B, do you hear that? I I, I didn't hear that. Uh, I don't understand it, but then, yeah, there should be a place to put an address to make a call. He's using, he's using his, he's, I presume he's using an iPad. Using an iPad, George? Yeah. It says, yeah. I opened a Zoom account under my email address. Well, wait a minute, not Zoom. Where are, oh, are, are you using Skype. Zoom or Skype? He's using Skype, George. I asked George what to use, and George said he installed Skype on his iPad. He should enter the address that I gave him into Skype to make a call. 
I'm looking up uh, under both. Uh, Jamma B said, enter the address he gave you on Skype, and that'll let you call And then call make a video in. call. Okay, and, and do video call. Okay. Okay? All right. Uh, now George's next photo is... Oh, I guess brother and sister. And the sister has her hand under the chin and the uh, chin of her little brother. And they're both smiling like they're at a photo shoot or possibly love each other. Uh, Ranger Rex says, two siblings on a photo shoot. I can't. <laughs> Demo said, I can't you believe you ate all that stew? Uh, Mandy the Clown says, she has a knife behind her back. Let me air tag you right here. Look at the camera. Coochie, coochie, coo. Photo while they're still smiling. I'll make the incision right here. Close your mouth. You'll catch flies. Keep your chin up. Look, he's got a hickey. Be glad it's just my hand. When you get older, you'll have two chins. Not on the hair of that chinny chin chin. Who gave you that hickey? Oh, my God. Getting married younger. Young Ben Affleck and sister, close your mouth. Um, and no hair. Keith 512. Is that your first chin whisker? The innocence of kids. Big sis takes care of little brother. Look at that wonderful chin. So what do we got here? Ten, twenty dollars, anyone? So how long do we have to smile? Spit it out. It might still be good. <laughs> this chat room. Whoa, none kissing cousins. I see whiskers. You have some opossum chili on your chin. Her hand is actually stuck to his chin. Did you forget to shave today? That lipstick on your cheek is pretty, but it's not mine. Don't take food out of my mouth. Phil is still in her first husband. <laughs> Cut it off right here and more presents next year for me. And we'll end with how much would you pay? Uh, okay. And George said, well, we can't count on George is off getting, uh, setting up for Skype. Um, so we'll just go on to photo number six, which is close up of a hand on a deck of cards. Close up of a hand on a deck of cards. So George is going to be chat room celebrity of the week this week, okay? Except he's going to be celebrity chef of the week, and we'll explain why. Uh, pick a card, any card. Pick a card, I dare you. Pick a finger, any finger. Let's pay, play war. Pick a card, any card. Boy, that seems to be it. Pick a card, any card. 52 card pick up. Oh, all hands on deck. Take a card, any card. The moment my paycheck vanished, all thumbs on deck. The beginning of 52 pickup, another all thumbs on deck. Uh, are you going to deck me on the street and in the bar? Hand model practice deck. This deck is special. Pick a card as long as the one I marked. You can pick a card, but you can't pick your nose. Deck them. Shuffle the deck. Play your cards right. <laughs> we might get George back. Buy a card from the bottom for a buck. I can fling these cards so hard they'll cut through steel. And we'll end with Chi-Town Deke. Pick a card, any card. No, wait, not that one. Pick this one. Pick this one. Uh, all right. And George said something, but we're trying to get George on Skype. Um... And we'll see how it goes. So meanwhile, we'll go into some logo. All right. Oh, oh, George. Oh, I, I, uh, there's one more photo. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. There's one additional photo. Oh, oh. Uh, chat room. Someone will put it in their answer. These have a... 
a name and United used to have them with coffee. Stroop. Uh, Stroop. Are they spruce? Struffle? Stroop. Yes, yeah, Stroop, I think, is it, right? Waffle cones? Stroffle? Dessert? Tonight's dessert? Pizza? No stew waffle? They have a, well, they have a short name. Stoofels, is that it? Uh, all the layers George has to go through to get up on Skype. Fishing weights, George needs to get onto Skype and stop waffling. We have to loose loon in the studio. We have a loose loon in the studio, awful waffles with bit of batter. Crossbreeding project between waffles and pancakes. Holland waffle gunk, round waffles are an abomination. Stale waffles with caramel. Stoop waffle. Mmm, pancakes. Now I'm hungry again. Who stacked the strooped? Stroop. Let go of my ego. These waffles cut steel. They're stroop waffles. Waffle cooties. <laughs> Crunch on this. So the sweet stops shop now sells hamburgers. Dentist love notes. Open cell styrofoam. <laughs> Quantum computer chips. I told you not to put egos in the dryer. Waffle house in the middle. I'm not saying you have a big mouth, but let go my stroopers. Waffles and dingoes to you. I can't believe you'd stroop that low. Crispy flapjacks and we'll and with pour some sugar on mine. All right. And George said, we'll find out another day. Okay. So we're waiting to see if George. Uh, well, I guess we'll just go on to some logo. Uh, uh, um. If he calls, I'll let you know. Okay. Very good. Very good. So we're going to play the new logo, which... Even with my glasses, I cannot read that type. So I put it under the mag glass. Holy cow. Uh, uh, um, what energy drinks name suggest that the effects last 300 minutes? Name of the energy drink whose results last 300 minutes. The energy drink. Uh, uh, uh. I can do the math, but I don't know the actual name. Uh, I think if you do the math, you actually get the name. Oh. Uh, well, no, you, you don't actually get the... You do, there you go. Okay. What was your answer then, Jammer B.? I did the math wrong. I came, I came, up, <laughs> I came up with 10-hour energy drink. <laughs> no, it is indeed five-hour energy. Yeah, uh, uh, very good. What does, Nintendo, what does Nintendo call the customizable avatars that players create on the Wii? I know this one. Okay, don't say it out loud. What does Nintendo, Nintendo call the customizable avatars players can create on the Wii? Weebles? <laughs> Idiots? Wii heads? Transformers? Pokemon? Wee wee? Weebos? Ambo? Amibo? Goofballs? Weebles? Lemmings. My. Twix. Nintendo idiots. Wee wee gerbils. Mimis. Wee people on the screen. It's pronounced amiibo. Thank you. Jamma B, you said you know what the answer is. Pretty sure and they're the Mies, the M-I-I's. 
That is correct. That is correct. Um, oh, my God. I have no idea what company packages their low-calorie ice cream Ugh. in a tub with a golden lid. I never heard of this. What company practice uh, packages its low calorie ice cream in a tub with a golden lid? Fuds, Turtle Wax, Doracell, Halo, Halo Top, Halo, Magnum, Blue Bunny, Seal Test, Gazelle Creamery, Pretension. <laughs> Rufus, I like that. Pretentious. Uh, Low-calorie ice cream is an oxymoron. I can't believe it's not butter. Bluebell. haagen Steal my lid. Halo. Dry as low gold brand. Yo play. Tin hat. Ew, who would eat that? Gold slick vodka. Schlitz. Gold bond ice cream. Beverly Hills Creamery. That's very funny. Cream de creme, creme de creme. All right, Jam would be any idea? Company I'm going with packages? Captain J. I think Hagen Dazs has a, a gold in their logo. You would be wrong, but several people in the chat room are correct. It is Halo Top. There you go. Huh? Web eighty five ninety three said it's Halo. Um, okay, what outdoor clothing company shares its name with the southernmost region of South America? Ooh, ooh, I know that too. Oh, don't say it, don't say it. Which outdoor clothing company shares its name with the southernmost region of South America? Oh, oh, North Face, Outback. Radagonia, Patagonia, Patagonia, wow. The Way Down There Clothing Company, the Bologna, <laughs> the Falklands, that world famous outerwear company, the Falklands, Mr. Folding Machine, North Face, Columbia. I copy you all, Patagonia. All right, Jammer B, you know it, you say it. Patagonia. Patagonia is correct. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, um. All right, I, you know what? I found, I bought that since I spent money on the Guinness World Records game, okay? Which is not a success because I think I paid a dollar. Are you All sure right. This is kind of hamburger. What was that? Yes. Okay. Oh, okay. I, I can show the picture. Well, no, I can't because that'll give it away. the The question is, how much does the world's largest commercially available hamburger weigh? All right. So this is from the Guinness Book of World Records game. How much does the is the world's largest hamburger commercially available way? You know, they weigh it before they cook it. Uh, that is correct. And it doesn't weigh that much after you cook it. That is true. And that is why, I don't know if they're allowed to do it now, but a food stylist would cook hamburgers just a touch and then color them and then do the... the uh, Grill marks with magic markers, but you probably, I don't think you're allowed, 10 tons, 5 pounds, 10 pounds, 4,002 ounces. You know, the food stylist just have weight. very small plates and cups and hands. That would make the burger yes. bigger. Yes, they used to, like in airlines, they used to get little people to be the passengers. The seats looked enormous. All right, so I can see... That people are way, way off. So, Jamie B, take a guess. One world's pound. largest ham, 
One pound. Well, you got quarter pounders, right, at McDonald's, so four times that. I'll say one pound. No, okay. All right. Well, that's why I didn't show you the photo. Uh, uh, um... Oh, my God. Okay. So yes. So that's, that's not Photoshop. That's a real person. That is not photo. So it looks like it's not... about five feet across. Yes. <laughs> I have no idea, but. <laughs> a restaurant in Southgate, Michigan, on their menu, Features a hamburger that weighs 185 pounds. Oh, my God. And it is available for sale for $499, including cheese and pickles. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay. Do they deliver? Oh, I, oh that's very funny. I guess they're going to have to. I guess they're going to have to. Um, oh, he... Wow, how timely could this be? This is from I'm not saying you're stupid. Yeah, well, then who is saying what I'm ye- stupid? <laughs> Everybody says that about you. What year was the first Olympics game televised? What year was the first Olympics televised uh, uh, um. <laughs> um, I think 21's a little early 60 62 um, Wow uh-huh. it just occurred to me that yeah. in the movie contact, there's a clue. All right, I don't know the clue. I'm gonna. I'm doing 1952. I uh, saw a couple of people like uh, uh, Dr. Mom, Grandma, who say Dr. 1932. In Germany, they had television. So, if, if you've remembered the movie Contact, the the aliens were sending back to us the first um, television signal they received, which was Hitler at the Olympics. You know, and then oh. everybody freaked out. Why are the aliens sending us pictures of Hitler? Interesting. Now, I have no idea what's on the card. So what's your answer then? I'll Jim say 1932. 1932. Okay. What year were the Olympics first televised according to the card on the game? I'm not saying you're stupid. Oh, 1936, this okay. card says. Okay. All right. Well, well, wait, wait, well, wait, wait, and it was probably Germany, and it was, you know, and Hitler gave a speech. Okay. Oh, what percentage of American women have been married at least once by age 55. What percentage of American women have been married at least once by the age 55? Now this is uh, a much newer version of Logo. So I'm going to say it's lower than I, you know, in the old days, women, it was automatic that they're going to get married and not work. Um, but uh, what percentage of American women? I'm going to go, I'll, I'll play it safe. I'll say half. I'll go 50%. And Jamma B, your answer? Well, wow, 85%? I'm going with 80%. Whoa. Geek Wannabe, 60. Mandy the Clown, 72 Salty corn bar, 90? Um, what percentage of American women have been married at least once by age 55 is... Oh, my God! Jay! Although he said in dog years, the <laughs> answer is 90... In dog years? That's what he said. 95%. What was your answer, Jeremy B? 80 80, you're up there. Wow. 
Wow. Okay, no luck with, oh, well, you're going to tell me if you ever connect. Uh, still still um, no call. That's okay. We can do the, the, this video next week. Uh, well, I don't even get this. I'll just read it because I have no idea how you could even take a guess. And I don't even know. I'll just read it to you. <laughs> what percentage of the war, the world's garlic <laughs> is produced, produced in China? <laughs> I mean, aren't they making all our TV sets and everything else? Do they have time to is make garlic? Chinese food garlicky? I guess some of it is. Boy, I don't think so. Well, we'll we'll see what the, what we get. What percentage of the world's garlic is produced in China? Well, you know they produce tons of rice. Oh, all right, uh, forty percent. Wow. People is going very high. It almost seems like something so insignificant to bother exporting. Uh, Jamie B, what's your answer? What percentage I'll, of I'll the world's... With, I'll stick with your uh, previous answer, 50%. 50%, okay. Becky's down to 20%. Since I don't have an idea, <laughs> any idea, it seems like a good <laughs> yeah, middle ground. Safe. Yeah, 50 is pretty good. Uh, okay, ladies and gentlemen, what percentage of the world's garlic is produced in China? Oh, whoa. Eh, 75%. Wow. Wow. Did anybody get that? 75 who knew the chinese garlic uh, exporters okay i'm sorry chinese garlic exporters are who yeah knew. i guess i guess all right we have another logo question and then we'll do a snappy answer the us imports what captain j that can't be right i think he meant exports uh, well, Captain J likes to cut up, so I assume that's why he put that we export to them. I, you know, I, yeah, okay. Oh, right, well, Jam, well, let's see if Jam B knows this, Mr. Spaceman. A person cannot be recognized as an astronaut by NASA until they traveled how many miles from the surface of the Earth? And your answer can be within a hundred miles. <laughs> that's not what. That's <laughs> that's that's pretty. That's you know, so stupid, isn't it? It seems I heard recently because of all because of Jeff Bezos's uh, yes, Blue yes. Origin flights that just go above the Carmen line, that NASA says they're not astronauts because. In addition to having to go into space, you have to do something astronaut-like, you know, like pilot a ship or do an experiment or something. You can't just be a tourist and call yourself an astronaut. Oh, that's interesting. But, but hundred within, you know, because I think it's what like uh, ten miles or fifty miles. I, you know, it's not that. Let's see how fly airplanes fly at what five miles up. 10 miles? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. okay. I would, I'm guessing 100 miles. So that, with 100, mi with 100 miles uh, variation, that means between 0 and 200 miles. Okay. Uh, Pack and W agrees with you. He says 100 miles. Travis, 25 miles. Becky is at 42 miles. Redacted, 8 mile high. 100 mile club, 88. Bill in Michigan says, okay, 500 miles. Uh, all right. I will Actually, say you said you that um, the the uh, space station is like 125 to 130 miles up. And um, geosynchronous orbit, the satellites that stay over one point uh, on the Earth are 22,000 miles up. So they're definitely astronauts. All right. All right, here's the answer. Okay, 
a person cannot be recognized as an astronaut by NASA until they have traveled how many miles from the safest the surface of the Earth? The answer officially is 50 miles. But if they're giving you a 100-mile range, you are correct. And several other people are correct. So I could, go, Michigan. I could go 50 miles down in a tunnel into the Earth and be an astronaut. Uh, that's like okay. within 100 miles of 50 yeah, miles Yeah, no, you're space. right. Well, wait a minute. Oh, yes, you will have traveled uh, from, the, from the surface of the Earth, right? Into the Earth, it's, yeah, but I'd still be no, within yes. 100 miles of you, 50 miles. Yeah, okay. Well, why don't you do that? And we'll, we'll call NASA and no, see if they recognize it. Let me get the boring it. company. They'll dig me a hole. <laughs> Okay, after which cartoon duo did NASA name the two satellites that chase each other around the Earth measuring gravitational irregularities? Jim would be, we're counting on you to know this. Oh my Seriously? God! After which cartoon duo did do NASA know. name its two satellites? That chase cheats other around the Earth measuring gravitational irregularities. Ben and Jerry, <laughs> Sam and Dave, <laughs> Mick and Monk, Wally and the Roadrunner, Tweety and Sylvester. Oh, you know what? The right answer's up there. Laurel and Hardy, Tom and Jerry, Bert and Ernie, Fred and Bonnie, Wayne and Schuster. Coyote and Rub Runner chat room. The answer is, and it is up there, and it just went by again, uh, Danielle. The two, the cartoon duo, NASA named the two satellites are that chase each other around the Earth is Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry. All right, we'll do one more. What is the area code of the Kennedy Space Center in Florida that is referenced by rocket launches that have taken place there. What's the area code of the Kennedy Space Center in Florida that references many of the rocket launches that have taken place there? Nine one one, four one one, three two one, eight zero eight nine one one zero zero seven, six six six, three two one. Jamie B, your answer. Uh, I'll go with zero zero one. It's a total guess. Uh, it is a total guess because a lot of you have it. Three, two, one. That is a good area code for the that is great isn't it that that is really great um okay we'll do a all right so i guess we'll do george next week and by end we can uh iron out all the differences all right if if Um, you had asked me about the the grace satellites i could have told you about the gravity recovery and climate experiment follow-on those are the gray satellites nicknamed Tom and Jerry. Oh, well, but I didn't. <laughs> I okay. Wouldn't. Okay. Al Jaffe spews out more snappy answers. I'm going to cover Al's answers. Okay. Lady looking at couple looking at two gorillas in a cage. And they are asking, is this the zoo? Okay, and down there it says, do not feed or annoy the animals. And the couple is asking, is this the zoo? And your snappy answer is, no. (laughs) Mesh Potato says, no, this is number 10 Downing Street. No, it's the county jail. No, it's the future of neighborhoods. No, it's a voting booth. 
It's gorilla wine tasting. It's Barrel of Monkeys, Planet of the Apes. Yes, and they're watching you. It's the Lice Picking Palace. No, it's a zoo. It's a live art exhibit. It's a new TV pilot. It's the dating game. It's Citibank. Oh, my God. No, they're trying Halloween costumes. It's excellent. No, it's the prison. No, these are the tourists. You're the zoo. It's the metaverse. No, this is where we feed guests to animals. It's, <laughs> it's Macy's Christmas window, says Myra. No, they're stuffed. It's your, no, it's your family tree. No, they're my in-laws. No, it's the return lines at Target. <laughs> Chat would be very funny. It's King Kong's family reunion. No, it's a hairy man contest. Uh, no, it's a large mirror. That's very funny. Uh, they're going so fast. A funny suit display case. Uh, no, it's CPAC. I can't hear. I have a banana in my ear. It's the see-through honeymoon suite. Yes, it is, you damn dirty ape. It, no, it's a Hollywood set. It's a pet store. It's Godzilla University. No, this is the dating game. No, this is the King Kong 3D movie. No, it's Canada. No, it's the Gorilla Massage Company. You're next. And we'll end with, it's the Banana Lovers Annual Meeting. Okay, so Al Jaffe said, is this the zoo? No, this is the Pentagon. And these are the Joint Chief of Staffs planning guerrilla warfare. Oh, no one did guerrilla warfare. Uh, no, this is uh, Planet of the Apes. Someone said that. No, this is the real world. The zoo is downtown in the business district. District. So some people got close to that. Uh, uh, very good chat room. Uh, okay. All right, so I guess we're going to pass on George for this week. And we'll get that squared away for next week. I have two leftover uh, famous ma match game questions played by famous people. And then we'll do, oh, let me just, oh, is Alex joining us? I'm calling him up now. You're calling him now? I am ringing Dennis now. Uh, Alex is answering. And Dennis uh, will, on the second ring, should come down. Okay. You know what? This is, it's interesting because I would have written this question because of the date, but I, I didn't remember that we, <laughs> it's very interesting. The end of, this is like, Backstage stuff. The end of the original match game became Family Feud. Okay? And this is one of the questions that is sort of like that. Because we would poll people in the audience to get a match game question. And then after a while, I guess it was Goodson because he did everything, said, you know what? Let's just make the end of match game a single blank and poll the audiences and make that into a totally different game. All right. Uh, so this match game question played. Oh, does anybody remember either of these people? Selma Diamond and Wally Cox played this game. Okay. In August of 1964. And this is how it went. We asked 50 women in our studio audience to fill in this blank. And you try to match the 50 women. And the question is, if I could redesign my house, I would like to have more blank. We asked 50 women in our studio audience to fill in this blank. Yes, Selma Diamond Night Court. If I could redesign my house, I would like to have more blank. Uh, 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 uh. Closet space, basements, 
windows, bathrooms, more doors. Oh, kitchen space. That's good. More husbands. <laughs> uh, that's very... <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, kitchen space is great. Um, I was, made the concert. I like to have more room in the basement for my husband's body. Uh, more trap doors, more torture chambers, more robot vacuums. Uh, okay, since uh, we'll start with Alex, far, far away. Alex, we asked 50 women. If I could redesign my house, I would like to have more blank. And they said... Alex is uh, actually on the phone. I've seen him oh, okay. uh, talking on the phone, so he is unable to participate. Is he talking to George? Uh, I was. My guess is he's talking to work. He's actually oh, been okay. called at home by his work, and he's trying to figure out something. Work. See, there he is walking. Oh, I see him. I see him. Phone. He's trying. He's going to get as far away from us as possible. Uh, okay, Jamma B, we asked 50 women if I could redesign my house. I would like more blank. And you said more bathrooms, a lot of matches. I got a lot of matches. I would like more closets. And Dennis said... I was, oh, I don't know if you got any makeup, uh, uh, any, uh, Charlie, that's only the first question. More makeup space. Not yet, Charlie. We're a way away yet. Um, okay. Oh, wow. One of my favorite match game people. This was pay, played by Peter Lawford and Lauren Bacall. Lauren Bacall, I, I think I played that. We'll play it again one day. Where Lauren Bacall says she's in love with me on Match Game. Uh, Peter Lawford, Lauren Bacall played this in January, February, March, April 1968. John drove a blank truck. John drove a blank truck. Okay. Ice truck, trash. Um, <laughs> John drove an imaginary truck. A stolen truck. Charlie, not yet. Ice cream truck, a delivery truck. Brings truck he stole. Buy a truck. Charlie, not yet. Not yet. Two more questions. After this. This and then two more. Um, okay, then we'll start with you. John drove a blank truck. Oh! I don't know if you got any matches. John drove a toy truck. Okay, you did. Uh, I said John drove a garbage truck. I got some matches. Jamma B, you said... I changed John my mind. Drove. I changed my mind and I still didn't get any matches. <laughs> See, <laughs> weren't weren't okay. they supposed to be on every corner? A taco truck? On every corner. No, the closest you got was a Tonka truck, but it's no match. Mm. No match. Dumb Donald was so dumb. How dumb? So dumb he thought sap came from blank. Dumb Donald was so dumb he thought sap came from blank. It was hard, actually. I wrote this question, but it's hard. He thought sap came from... All right. I think I will get some answers with this. This could almost be a snappy answers kind of question. Let me see. Uh, uh, from a syrup bottle? From his family tree? From wooden dummies? Oh, that's funny. Plastic bottles from suckers, from a knock on the head, from sapiens, sad people, the CEO's office, maple syrup, gorillas in a cage, from ears, uh, oh, the TV remote, oh my God, second audio program, Sears Auto Parts, bleeding trees, his nose, horses, yeah, this is this was way hard, Aunt Jemima. John's truck. 
<laughs> oh my God, Grandma's expiring body. Uh, all right, I didn't get any matches. I thought I would get a match here. John was so dumb. How dumb was he? He thought sap came from a sap tree. Mm. Nothing. Uh, Dennis, you said. Uh, he thought it came from a liquor store. Mm. Nothing. Jamma B, you get any matches? You said. I did. From dummies. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And Alex still on the phone? Uh, yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. Oh, this is good. One ad writer said to the other, Charlie, not yet. Not yet. That's what the ad this writer is- said to the other ad writer? <laughs> One ad writer said to the other ad writer, this is the stupidest copy line ever. It's the blank used by Venus de Milo. One ad writer said to the other, this is the stupidest, the st- stupid, the stupidest copy line ever. It's the blank used by Venus de Milo. All right, this has got to be a ton of matches. A ton of matches, I'm not looking up yet. Uh, okay. To, oh no, chat room. Oh, chat room. Oh, that. Oh, that's good. Hand sanitizer. That's very good. Nail file. That's good. Gloves. Oh, these are good. Okay. TikTok. Steering wheel. Um. Okay, Jim B. We'll start with you. One copywriter said to the other, "This is the." St- Can you hear Charlie growling? <laughs> can you can you hear him? <laughs> he's upset that he's not. <laughs> Charlie, this and one more question after this. All right. Uh, Jammer B, one uh, copywriter said to the other, "This is the stupidest copy line ever. It's the blank." Used by Venus de Milo. I don't even know if this is a thing, but I wrote it down anyway. Wristlet. A wristlet. Uh, okay, well, you're in the ballpark. Mm. All right, I said the deodorant. <laughs> Charlie, already enough. Opera gloves. Okay, you will match gloves. You got glove matches. And Alex is still away. Charlie. Charlie. After this question. My God. What a spoiled brat. (laughs) We will arrange your wreck right after this question. We'll bring on Charlie. Will you stop it? Charlie's a good dog. Can you hear him? (laughs) Last question. Dave said, my new car not only can drive itself, it can blank itself. Dave said, my new car can not only drive itself, it can blank itself this is probably easier the these days than it was 30 years ago oh i figured out what i was supposed to write last it was bracelet bracelet was the word i was trying to think of when i came oh, up with okay. wristlet <laughs> okay well bracelet. bracelet's good i knew there was a word anything to do with arms was good um all right, Dave said, my new car not only drives itself, it can blank itself. Is Alex still on the phone? Yeah, he's Charlie, not you're available next. yet. You're, all right, Charlie, you're next. All right, we'll start with me. New car can not only drive itself, it can park itself. 
Malfunction That's of the sound effects. Uh, and then it smashes park itself. And Jammer B, you said it can park itself. Okay. Oh, repair itself, oil change itself, impound itself. That's funny. Uh, but park oh, was the right answer. Make payments on itself. That's really good. Can That's tow the itself. That's I want. Yeah. Auto tune itself. Can car jack itself. There are a lot of great answers there. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, at long last. Come on, Charlie. It's t- Oh, my God. <laughs> Charlie, okay. Okay, come on. Charlie, do you want to be on camera, Charlie? Just hang on. Come on, up here, Charlie. Okay, okay here you go. Here you go, Charlie. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, finally showing. Okay, it is Charlie the doll. Look at it. Look at how excited. Oh, let's move the mic out of the way. All oh, right, Charlie, look at you, look at you, Charlie. Look at, now look at this boy. Oh, boy, look at me. Oh, I'm finally to see me at home. Hi, chat room. Hi, chat room. Yeah, I'm your, yeah. Where's the chat room, Dickie? Where is, you told me there were 500 people here. I just see Dennis. Where's this crowd? Where's somebody that's food? Charles, you are something. You are something. What a hat. Right. Now you're happy? That was so funny, Charles. Okay. I think you can sit down. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> King of the Wags. Jay said, if I could harness that energy. Uh, yeah, does Charlie get scale? Yeah, Charlie belongs to Ostra, the, the dog union, the, the dog union. <laughs> Sag Ostra. No, he can't. I, I should, I should actually uh, switch to the uh, desk speaker when Charlie's on, so we can hear. <laughs> he is a riot. I, I, I have no idea what goes on in his mind, but. He, today, normally he he waits for a couple of questions. I don't know how he has that. But today, from the get-go, uh, he wanted to come in. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this has been another edition of regular, old-fashioned, weird gizfiz. Brought to you by Turtle Wax. It's not just for turtles anymore. Regular Old Fashioned Giz Fizz is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman, Dick D. Bartolo, Dennis Wonderland, Charlie the Dog, Jamma B, Beatmaster, Scooter X, Frosty Winnipeg, Geek Wannabe, Myra, Becky, Dr. Mom, Caesar. Uh, Loke, demos that are going so fast. Morgus, Roberto Hellman, Bill in Michigan, Loke, uh, Redacted, Jim Tez, Gentman, Travis MC, DI83 Stooge, Oznet, Back and W Gumby Production, and brought to you by Turtle Wax. It's not just for turtles any more. Chat room. This week, uh, we're doing Giz Whiz on Wednesday, okay? This week, Giz Whiz on Wednesday. And then Saturday, we're... It, Leo didn't say he was going away next weekend. Did he, Jammer B? He will be here this weekend. He's gone during the week, but he'll be back for Tech Guy. Oh, okay. He's he's here for uh, for radio. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks, Jammer B. This was great. George, we'll, we'll get this organized by next uh, week. Okay, we'll show the video and you will be uh, chat's uh, chef of the week. All right, Alex, (laughs) bye. Take care. Tell me you want to raise, Alex. Okay, bye. Thanks, Jammer B. Ooh, fireplace.